Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Steve Yurlano, AA8TJ. And he has problems with noise, and that's very unfortunate because uh, noise is the bane of uh, amateur radio operators world around. He says, I experience a high noise level and a lot of AC noise. I can hear my wife's washing machine swishing in my radio, and when the HVAC unit or other devices turn on, my meter jumps up. I have added additional ground rods, and everything is well grounded. Now, I'm assuming that your ground rod is close to your station, like right outside the wall, close. Okay, and you've got a ground cable coming in and up to your station single point ground where everything is grounded to it. That really helps, by the way. I would check that and make sure all the connections are good. Other stations give me nice signal reports, but I have trouble hearing them because of the noise. My antenna is an off-center fed dipole up approximately 35 feet, suspended off the tower with a section of PVC pipe. Very good. It's fed with a new LMR 400. I just changed out the coax about a month ago. Rig is an FTDX 3000D. I have that rig right up there. It's the one on the end. Uh, it's a wonderful radio. Okay. Now... I have placed Snap-on toroids and all of my power cords and have a trip light isobon power strip which has its power cord wrapped around a 4 inch diameter toroid. All the toroids are type 31 material. Do you have any suggestions? Is it possible that my ground is acting like an antenna? Yes, it is possible, though not likely. Or is all of the noise caused by band conditions? No. My noise level varies between S3 and S7, depending on the band that you're operating at. First of all, let's go through some things that help reduce noise in the radio itself. You have, um, there's available to you something that can be a preamp or an attenuator, okay? Normally you want your preamps off and your attenuator off for most HF operation. When you get up around uh, 12 and 10 meters, you might start looking at one of those preamps. Uh, but you don't use a preamp routinely on HF. Okay, second, look at the noise blanker. Now, the 3000 has a couple different settings on the noise blanker. And uh, noise blanker was originally made for automobile ignition noise, but since the industry has gone to high resistance spark plug cables, that problem has gone away. But the feature still exists on our radios. If there is uh, arcing or something like that, uh, this can help reduce it. Try the different settings. There are different settings for the noise blanker. One of them is specifically designed for the Chinese over the horizon radar. Uh, which was a thing a number of years ago, isn't so much of a problem now. Okay, now you also have your noise reduction filter. I routinely operate uh, without the noise blanker because I don't need it, but with the noise reduction, I always throw some in. Now, it says in your book that you've got 15 different algorithms. Actually, you have 15 different levels of noise reduction. Try playing with all of those and see what happens. The more noise reduction, the less intelligible the signals are. So you're doing a balance between noise reduction and uh, the intelligibility of the signal that you're trying to listen to. Okay. Uh, the other thing is you want to make sure that the RF stays outside and that you've got a nice conduit in. So that RF line coming from your antenna comes to your ground rod where at a bare minimum the shield is attached to the ground rod. The easiest way to do that is a PL259, P259, 
PL259 to a barrel connector and then use a, uh, a post clamp to attach that to the ground rod. That, as a minimum, will cut the noise. Better yet, take this opportunity to install a lightning arrestor there. You will be amazed. If you've not done this, you'll be amazed at the difference it makes in the noise. Now, the other way into the radio is through the power leads. Okay? Now, you're using something to provide power. Uh, you didn't say what. I'm going to assume it's a nice, typical ham radio switching power supply made for ham radio, uh, not something that you just picked up on the Internet for five bucks, but uh, something like a Samlex uh, or PowerWorks or something like that that's made for ham radio because that will act to keep um, provide a very nice quiet power stream. If you are getting problems, take the leads together to your radio. Often for some reason on HF, and this is true of the 3002, the wires are kind of separate. The reason they're that way is so you can mount them in a car. We're not interested in mounting in a car. So take those leads and wrap them together around a couple times on a snap-on uh, ballon. That'll keep the noise from coming into the front end. One thing you can tell whether it's coming in the power or not is to disconnect the coax from the back of the radio and see if all the noise goes away. Okay, so grounding is of extreme importance. Uh, central point ground, not chain grounds, but central point ground in your station and from there to a ground rod right outside the house, which is bonded then to your utility ground rod, uh, just like an Ask Dave number eight shows how to do this. Um, if you can uh, add another ground rod as your coax is going out, fine. You know, the best practices for grounding are found in the second edition of the ARRL book called Bonding and Grounding. Okay, now you will find in going through that book that it's probably far beyond what really any ham does, but it is definitely something we want to work in the direction of. Uh, there is um, a Motorola book that's mentioned in Ask Dave number eight that also provides a lot of hints and stuff. What we want to do is make that conduit, the uh, coax coming into the house, be kind of like a secret tunnel to get that to the radio. Okay, so the household stuff doesn't get into the antenna, but it goes straight out to the antenna and it kind of tunnels into your radio. And you do that by grounding everything and grounding it to a single point ground in uh, the shack, okay? Just as it's shown in S. Dave number eight. Now that's about what I can think about that you do about the ground. Make sure that the utility ground is actually grounded Okay, if you're going to mess with utility, get an electrician to do that. Okay, because one of the problems, you know, if you, if you touch 110 in your house, you'll pop the circuit breaker uh, and you'll get a nasty little shock. If you touch it on the other side of the main breaker panel, you've got a tremendous amount of inductance in the lines and that shock will be terribly much longer and easily kill you. So uh, don't mess with things having to do with the panel. Get an electrician to, uh, to do that. So, of course, if you disconnect the antenna and all the noise goes away, then you know it's coming in the antenna. Another thing you can do that an Augie told me about recently is uh, to do a factory reset on the radio. Now, before you do that, 
make a copy of, make a note in your owner's manual of all the uh, settings for the huge number of memory settings that are in that radio. Make a note of those because you'll lose them all if you do a factory reset. But a guy, uh, he wrote to me and said he did a factory reset and that caused his noise problem to go away. So, so there you have it. I hope something in all that set of ideas might prove useful to you. If you do find out something that works, do let me know. So there you have it. Now, there are some charts that follow that show how to uh, help the channel financially, how to get in touch with me with a question, and lists our valuable patrons and PayPal contributors, as well as one-time tips. And we're going to modify that to start adding the um, magic chats or whatever they're called. Because if you uh, make a comment on uh, the channel, there's an opportunity there to throw in enough for a cup of hot chocolate or something like that uh, if you want to. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73. <laughs>